And on the back side of here, you can see we have all of our drives connected. So you can see our eight power cables right here. And then you can see our eight data cables as well in blue. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this episode of New Egg Now, I'm gonna be building my very own NAS featuring 112 terabytes of disk storage space, as well as two additional terabytes of SSD storage for our cache drive. These drives were provided by Lexar. Newegg is sponsoring today's video, but all the other parts and components were purchased by me. That being said, any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. If you're interested in anything you see here, the link should be in the video description. Now let's go ahead, let's look at our parts list. So here are all the parts and components on Newegg. You can see our build came in right at around $3,000, but this does not include the extra $70 I spent on an HBA card from LSI on eBay. So you have to factor that in as well. And don't be intimidated by that price. You do not have to buy as many drives as I had. You can change the capacity, mix and match brands, that sort of thing. I would recommend using some extra parts and components maybe you have lying around the house as well. So here's what we got, brand new EVJ 500 watt power supply. This is not fully modular, but that should be fine for what we're doing. You might wanna get one, depends on how many drives, etc. So next up we have our SanDisk 16 gig cruiser. This is just a USB flash drive. Our OS is gonna be stored on that. 16 gigs of RAM that I had lying around in my test bench, that's what we're gonna use. Next up, we had to get one of these splitter cables so we could get more options to connect all eight of our hard drives. Then you can see I added two fans into this build because our fractal design case down here only came with 240 millimeter fans, so I wanted to get a couple more. The added bonus is these have a white LED light that looks really cool. Nobody will see it, but it's still really cool nonetheless. Next up, we have a 10 gig network adapter. This is great for me to get some faster file transfer speeds. We don't wanna have a saturated network and that be the bottleneck for this build. I chose the Fractal Design Define R5 case because it has eight hard drive bays, perfect for what I need. They have some other great options too. And then I landed on the Seagate drive. It's a 14 terabyte drive. I purchased eight of them. So I thought it was a really good value. It's actually cheaper than the NAS drives but this is an enterprise rated drive, so I expect longevity to hold up just fine. Next up, shout out to Lexar again for sending us some um, M.2 drives we're gonna use as our cache drives in this build. So we have one, one terabyte and two 500 gigabyte drives. Next up, I had an i5 11400F that I was using as a test bench. So we're gonna take that and this MSI motherboard. Currently out of stock, but hopefully when you're watching this, it'll be back in stock, but I'm gonna be using those as kind of the brains of the operation. And on my test bench, I already had this Cooler Master Hyper H412R compact CPU air cooler installed. So we're gonna keep using that cooler as well. So that's a quick look at the build again, coming in right at around $3,000, but you can mix and match. You don't have to spend that much, or you can exceed me, one up me, flex on me and spend even more. Now let's let the fun begin and get this thing built. So the first thing we're gonna do with this particular build is I'm gonna swap and rearrange the fans. So we have this rear exhaust fan and we have one intake fan up here. I'm gonna take the rear exhaust fan out and we're gonna move that up to the front. So we'll have two intake fans there. And then I have these two Corsair fans that we're gonna install in the back of the case. We'll do one for the exhaust and we'll probably do another one for the exhaust up top. So now you can see I have the rear exhaust fan uninstalled and now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install it in the front panel. So you can see where the first one's already installed by default with the case. And we'll be able to drop this one right in there and install it. Fractal does give us everything we need. We have four long screws right here to mount the fan. Now you can see we have both fans installed on the front. So we can go ahead, we can clip this back on and get our fans installed in the back. So now you can see what it looks like with the fans installed right here. So we have the two Corsair fans in the back. We have a back exhaust and we have a top exhaust right there. You may have noticed to get that top fan installed and if you wanted to use a cooler or something else with some liquid cooling, you have to remove these panels. They're not magnetic, they just have a, a plastic clip that's difficult to remove, but then it just easily comes up too. It's really hard to explain. You'll just fidget with it for a minute and then it will come right off. So that's what we're doing right here. I may end up putting two of those panels back on depending on how loud it is and how good of temps we're getting. Next up, it's time to install our three cache drives. So you can see we have our Lexar NM620 drives. We have a one terabyte drive and we have two 512 
gigabyte drives and we have three m.2 slots on this board that we're going to fill up with those drives you can see since i went ahead and i'm recycling my test bench right here i already have the ram installed our cpu and our cooler right here so everything's all set and ready to go so now we're going to go ahead before we put it into the case we're going to get our drives installed on it so check out these drives. Again, we have a one terabyte Lexar drive followed by two 512 gigabyte Lexar drives. So now you can see we got all three drives installed. So our one terabyte drives under our heat sink right here in Shield. Then you can see we have our two additional 512 gigabyte Lexar drives installed in our two remaining slots. So now we're ready to install our motherboard right here. The first thing we have to do to prep our case is make sure we have our standoff brackets, which are included and we're gonna line them up where they need to go in position with our motherboard. So in this case, anywhere where we have A on the board, that's where we're gonna install our standoff brackets. Once those are installed, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna clip in our faceplate as well. You do not wanna forget the faceplate if your motherboard has one. This is gonna be when you want to install the faceplate and then you're ready to place the board in. So now you can see we got the motherboard installed and fastened in place. Everything's looking great. Plenty of space in this case too so far. And you can see from the back side right here, we have our IO shield properly installed as well too. Just make sure at this stage, guys, before you fasten it down, that you're not blocking any of your USB or anything else with the little grounding tabs. So there you go, you can see we're all set and ready to go. Now let's go ahead, let's get the power supply installed. So now you can see we got the power supply installed in the base of our case and we have all of the cables currently routed out the back. Now let's go ahead at this stage, let's connect everything that we can to our motherboard. So now you can see we got a lot of our cables connected. We'll come back through and we'll look at this in more detail once everything's connected, but now let's go ahead, let's get our hard drives installed. So check it out, you can see we have one hard drive installed right here on the tray and then it's just gonna slide right in like you see right here so there we go and it snaps right in and then we can easily remove it but to get it installed on the tray you can see what we did right here we took our nice little grommets that are going to help absorb any vibrations and then just place it in the correct slot for your drive where the holes line up so you can see just like so and then repeat that for each corner and then you're going to take the included screws and you're gonna fasten them in place with the holes on your drive. And you're gonna repeat that eight times. So now you can see we have all eight installed right here. Let's flip it around and look at the back side. Now you can see what it looks like from the back side of here. Check it out. Now we're ready to connect our drives. So we used our StarTech adapter cable right here. You can see it. We connected those four with it, four from our power supply. And then we took our other power supply run right here and connected the StarTech cable to it with the extra one to our last drive. And we connected our fan hub power to it as well. Now we gotta work on connecting the data side. So here's our HBA card right here. So from these two connectors, we have our breakout cables that came with it that we're gonna be able to connect all of our drives to. So that's what we're doing right here. We're gonna drop this in to this PCIe slot. We already removed the bracket and it should just gently snap in place. So there we go. Now we're ready to take our screw, tighten it back down and connect our breakout cables. So here's what it looks like with the breakout cables connected. Now we need to fish them through to the back and connect them to all the drives. Now you can see what it looks like from the back side with our breakout cables connected. What's nice is they're labeled P1, 2, 3, and 4, P1, 2, 3, and 4. So we have everything all set and ready to go right there. I also appreciate the blue color. That's helpful, so don't confuse it with any of the other cables, as you can see, because we have plenty of those out in the back here. So next up, we're gonna install our GPU. I'm not gonna keep the GPU in the build. I believe, I'm not positive, but I believe I need the GPU for initial setup because I have the 11400F Intel CPU that doesn't have integrated graphics. So I believe I'll need to see the screen. You might be able to set up without any graphics. I'm not positive, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna get this GPU installed just temporarily so we can set it up. Then once it's all set up, I'm going to remove the GPU and we'll install our network card right there because you can see I have multiple slots, but unfortunately due to the size of this card, it's not going to fit in any of the available slots that I have left. So let's go ahead. We'll just drop the GPU in place and then we'll connect it to our power cable right here. GPU's down. We're going to screw it back in place. Now you can see GPU's installed. It's fastened down and we have the power cable connected. 
So now as just a precaution, I went ahead, I booted up the system to make sure everything was working properly before I did any cable management. I didn't wanna spend all that time managing the cables just to realize something wasn't working. So as you can see right here, everything's up and running and it's working great. Now let's get our cables managed. So here's how we manage the cables on the back. You can see we routed our CPU power cord up this way. Everything else we tried to bring with our fans down this way and through the main channel and Velcroed everything in place. And then we tried to tidy up some of our breakout cables right here to the best of our abilities with how everything came together. I also went ahead, I tucked some of these away for future use if we ever want to use a GPU or something with this build or need access to that power. It's right there, same with this one. So they're just kind of tucked down at the bottom. Now let's look at it from the other side. Now you can see from the front side right here, everything turned out really clean and it looks great, especially when these fans light up and illuminate everything. So it's really nice that we have our cables just tucked in and out of the way. As promised, here's a close up look at all the cable connectors right here. So first up, we have our HBA card with our two breakout cables. You can see down on our motherboard, our header right there for our audio. Then you can see USB. Then we have our power button LED lights right there. Moving further up, you can see with our USB 3.0, our power to the board. And we have our fan connected right there to our fan hub. Then going up to the top, you can see our CPU fan right there. And then last but not least, we have our CPU power. And on the back side right here, you can see we have all of our drives connected. So you can see our eight power cables right here. And then you can see our eight data cables as well in blue connected to our drives. And you can kind of get a feel for how everything else was run along the back side and just kind of tucked out of the way. So overall, I'm really pleased with how this build came together. I think the fractal case is really what sets it apart. It's fantastic to have those eight drive bays right there. And we can reconfigure this as well, depending on what we're trying to accomplish with our build. There's room for future expansion and plenty of room to run all of your cables and to give us some great airflow as well with those two fans pushing the air in over the drives. And then how we have our exhaust fan position up top and one out back, we're in pretty good shape here. In the future, I would wanna say, I think the only thing I might change is maybe swapping out the motherboard for a different motherboard that has more PCIe slots for future expansion. We do have some additional slots open and available, but they're not gonna be large enough to fit another, let's say 10 gig card, or if we wanna add another HBA card. So with that being said, for future expansion, I will probably do something completely different anyways, which is why I'm not worried. And for eight, drives with 98 terabytes usable with one parity drive. I'm very happy with how this build turned out. Also, I wanna point out, you can see we don't have the GPU installed. Technically, if you have your BIOS configured already, you don't even need a GPU at all if you're using like an 11400F like I am to go through the initial setup. As long as your BIOS is ready to boot from a USB flash drive, you should be good to go without a GPU. So just keep that in mind. I went ahead just as a precaution. I did use the GPU, but I didn't even need it. And I've booted up multiple times now without the GPU and everything's working great. So I'm really happy with that. And we got our 10 gig card that's working as well. So like I said, it came together really, really nicely. Super happy with how it turned out. The case is definitely my favorite part about this build, which is what I was expecting. But again, I can't say enough good things about how easy it is to install the drives. It gave you everything you needed right out of the box to just connect your HBA card and breakout cables and you're all set and ready to go. Well, that concludes our video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget the product link will be in our video description below. Please go ahead, check it out and do your shopping from there. Any purchase made through that link helps support our channel at no additional cost to you. So we're really grateful and thankful for all of your support. While you're at it, can you go ahead and hit that like button for us? and subscribe to our channel. We have new content coming out daily and we don't want you to miss anything. Please go ahead and give us a follow online and make it a clean sweep. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Discord. You can message us on WeChat, check out our website and join our free newsletter. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget new content daily and we can't wait to see you in our next video.